In this video, we're going to apply scriptable objects to a bunch of systems that we made previously. Scriptable objects are great and they help us make our games more designer friendly. So we're going to use them to define items and recipes and apply them to our inventory and crafting systems. Let's begin! Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and this channel is all about helping you learn how to make your own games with in depth tutorials made by a professional indie game developer. So if you find the video helpful, consider subscribing. Okay, so in the last video, we covered the basics of scriptable objects what they are, how they are defined, how they are created, and how they can be used. If you haven't seen it yet, go check the link in the description to go watch it. After watching that video, you should be able to easily follow this one. So now that we know the basics of scriptable objects, we want to apply it to a concrete example. So over here, I have my crafting system. This was fully made from scratch in another video, so check it out to learn more. So I have the inventory system with a bunch of items. I can split them and then drag them onto the crafting system window. And if the recipe is correct, it crafts a more complex item. So there you go, with two wood, I make a stick. And then if I take one stick and two diamonds, there you go, I can make a diamond sword, now I can take that diamond sword and apply it to the player, and there you go, now the player has a diamond sword. So, really nice system. Now, the way we made this was by creating all the items and recipes through code. Now, that approach works just fine, but if you want your game to be more designer friendly, then we can use some really excellent scriptable objects. By using them, we can keep all of our data outside of our code and completely separate it from the logic. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. So over here is the item class. And as you can see, we have an inum for the item type. Then based on the item type, we have some functions down here to get sprite. So it receives a item type, then it does a switch on it and returns the sprite. And then another one to return a color. And we also return the name. Now we can group all of this data in a simple scriptable object. So let's do just that. So in here, let's create a new C-sharp script. We're going to call this our item scriptable object. And here we are. All right, now again, first things first, replace mono behavior instead extend scriptable object. And now let's see all the data that we need to represent a single item. Now, first of all, we actually have two options regarding the type. So we can continue using an enum just like we used over here for the basic item. So we can use this to define the type, or we can use the scriptable object itself as the type. So those are two interesting approaches. Now, if we were building this system from scratch, the better approach would possibly be to use the scriptable object itself as the type and not have to use the enum at all. However, in this case, since we're upgrading an existing system, it's probably going to be similar to keep the enum type for now. So later when everything is working with scriptable objects, if we want, we can then work on removing the type enum. So for now, let's store a public item dot item type for the item type enum. Then let's also store a string for the item name. And let's also store a sprite for the item sprite. Okay, so we have a type, a name, and a sprite, pretty basic. Now in order to create it, let's add the attribute create asset menu. And let's set a menu name Let's put it inside a folder called scriptable objects. And let's call this our item scriptable object. All right, so that's it. We have our scriptable object definition with all the fields that we're going to need to store the data for any of our items. Now back in the editor, let's create it. So for that, to keep things nice and organized, let's create a new folder for our scriptable objects. And inside, let's go to create scriptable objects. And yep, let's create an item scriptable object. And for this one, let's start off simple with just a piece of wood. So now here, let's set all of the data for this scriptable object. So first of all, for the type, let's select wood. Then for the item name, let's call it wood. And for the item sprite, let's also select the wood sprite. All right, that's it. So here we have a very simple scriptable object defining our single wood item. It has a type, a name, and a simple sprite. Now let's go to our item class. And in here, let's modify this to no longer work with the enum but instead of the enum, it's going to receive a scriptable object. So let's replace this with a item scriptable object for the item scriptable object. All right, that's it. And naturally we see a bunch of errors since the rest of our code is actually expecting the item to have an enum field. 
So we need to go through all the errors and replace all the instances where we were using the enum, and instead now we're going to use the atom scriptable object. So for example, on here on the git sprite, instead of having to ask for this place and get a switch, we simply go into the item scriptable object and we return the actual item sprite. So the sprite is no longer stored in the code, but rather in the scriptable object. Now here for the two string, instead of returning the item type, we go into the scriptable object to return the item name. All right, so I fixed all the errors in here. Now let's go and see the inventory. And yep, over here we have a bunch of errors because again, we're using the item type. Now again, all of this code was made fully from scratch in the previous videos where we made the inventory and crafting system. So if you feel lost, go rewatch those and you'll be able to easily understand the changes that we're making. Okay, so here in the inventory, we have our starting items, which again are using the item type. So let's comment this out for now. Then down here, let's see the other errors. Okay, so here we're comparing the item type. So you can do pretty much exactly the same thing, except we compare the item scriptable object. All right, there it is. Down here, we're doing another comparison. And right now we can just remove this function. All right, so all the errors have been fixed right now. And over here in our base testing script, we are creating the player's inventory. So we can also add a field. So we have a reference to our item scriptable object. And just for testing, we can get the player inventory in order to add an item. And we create an item. Press in the item scriptable object and a certain amount. All right, so just like this, the basics for our inventory should be working. So here we are, and on the testing script, we can see we have a field for a scriptable object and just select our wood scriptable object. Okay, let's test and see if the inventory is now working with scriptable objects. And yep, there it is over here, we have our starting inventory and yep, it does indeed have 10 pieces of wood. All right, so it's all working great. We changed our code to be based on scriptable objects instead of enums and everything works perfect. Awesome. Now let's continue. Instead of making our starting inventory over here through our testing script, let's once again separate the logic from the data and actually expose it in the editor. So let's create a simple struct to hold our starting items. All right, so here it is. So we define this struct which contains a item scriptable object and then an amount. It's also a system.serializable, so it actually shows up in the editor. Then up here, we've got a field for an array of starting items. And then on start, we simply get the player's inventory. We cycle through the array and we add the items to the player inventory. So there it is, very simple. And once again, the whole purpose is to be fully databased and fully exposed in the editor. So back in the editor, over here, we can see our starting item array. And now let's say, once again, just start with one, very simple. Then we take the scriptable object, let's select the wood, and now let's select six pieces of wood. Okay, let's see if our inventory does start with six pieces of wood. And if there you go, over there we have indeed six pieces of wood. All right, so we have the inventory fully working along with its starting state, but now it's all working with scriptable objects. So again, we completely took all of the data from inside our code and separated it from the logic. And just to verify this is all working, let's try making another scriptable object. So once again, right click, create a new one, a new item. Let's call this a diamond. And again, for now, we select the type enum. But again, in the future, we're going to use the scriptable object itself as a type. So we've got a basic diamond, select the sprite for the diamond. And now in order to add it to our starting inventory, just go in here and let's add another element to our starting items. And this one will be a diamond and let's say add two diamonds. Now let's see if it does indeed update without ever touching the code. And yep, there you go. We have wood and diamonds in our starting inventory. So once again, we didn't touch our code. Everything is completely database. All right, awesome. So far, so good. So now that the inventory is working, let's make the crafting system based on scriptable objects. Now, the one thing we need to do for that is to define a scriptable object for the recipe. So let's do just that. So create a new c -sharp script. Call this the recipe scriptable object. And once again, instead of modern behavior, it's a scriptable object. 
And now again, let's think of what data do we need to store a actual recipe. So we can inspect the crafting system that again, we fully made in the previous video. And over here, we see our recipe dictionary and we can see a whole bunch of different recipes. So we can see that we're creating a dictionary where we're going to hold the output type as the key. So for this one is the recipe for a stick. It's going to have this recipe and the recipe itself is essentially a three by three crafting matrix with all of the items required. So this one, you can see it requires none on all of these except two wood on these positions. Okay, so we need to store the output and then our item matrix. So over here in our scriptable object definition, let's first define a item scriptable object for the output. And then we just need to store our crafting matrix. So again, that's going to be of type scriptable object. And then let's call it item 00, zero and so on. All right, so here we have our three by three crafting matrix defined of type item scriptable object. So we got from zero, zero all the way up to two, two. All right, so just like this, we have our recipe definition. Now again, just add the create asset menu. All right, there it is. Now back in here on our scriptable objects, let's create a new scriptable object, a recipe scriptable object. Let's make this our stick recipe. So we have our two items and then we have our recipe. Now this is the recipe for the stick. So we also need to create the stick scriptable object. So again, very simple, just create new scriptable object and set up on the data. And now we just need to fill in our data. So first of all, for the output, the output of this will be a stick. And then for the recipe, we're going to have two pieces of wood right down the middle. So that's going to be on one zero, a piece of wood and on one one, also a piece of wood. All right, so there's our recipe definition. And if you wanted, you could combine this with a custom inspector to really make the recipes look visually great. Now I covered custom editors in a previous video and you can easily apply that knowledge here. So in fact, let me do that really quick. All right, so here it is the recipe with a really nice custom editor. We have the output and we can easily visualize the matrix for our crafting. So here is the whole editor script. It's long, but it's pretty simple. It's essentially just copy pasted for all nine positions. This is included in the project file. So if you want to browse around this to see how it works, you can go and download that. So we have our recipe scriptable object and it looks really awesome thanks to our custom inspector. Okay, now let's actually use it in our crafting system. So here we're no longer going to have a recipe dictionary. Instead, what we're going to have is going to be just a list of recipe scriptable object. And the way we set it up, we're creating the crafting system. So let's pass it in there. Okay, now let's remove the dictionary and now we're going to see a whole ton of errors. So let's fix all of them. Okay, the main one is just down here where we try to get the recipe output. And now again, we are not using the item type or rather the item scriptable object. Okay, so here we're cycling through the recipe scriptable object list. And now here, it's also a great way of seeing how you can store data with scriptable objects, but you can also run some logic. So for example, we need to ask the position on X, Y. So we can add that as a simple function. So on our recipe definition, let's do that. All right, there you go. Just a pretty simple function to return the various fields depending on the X and Y. And now here we go into the scriptable object and we use that nice function. All right, so there it is, pretty much the exact same logic. And if the recipe is indeed complete, then we're going to return the output. And if not, then we're going to return none, which in this case is null. Then down here on the create output, And yep, there we go. All right, so all the errors are fixed. Now our recipe data is no longer written directly in the code, but rather it is stored as a scriptable object. Now the last thing we need is just to pass in all the recipes to our crafting system. So here in our testing script, we have the starting items and let's also add all the recipes. And we pass that into our crafting system. 
Okay, now back in the editor, we have our testing script with the recipe script long object list and just drag the stick recipe. All right, everything should be working. Let's try. Okay, so here we are. Let's try making a stick. Now for the stick, we need two pieces of wood. So let's split that, put one there, then one down there. And yep, there we go, we have our stick recipe. And now we can take this and drag and yep, there we go, we have a stick. All right, awesome. So our recipe is working perfectly. And now for example, if we wanted to change the recipe, Using the script small object system, it's really simple. So in here, let's say that wood is not down the middle. Let's say in order to make a stick, we put none there and we put a diamond over there on the corner. So that's all we have to change. We don't touch the code at all and let's run. And if we use our previous recipe, nope, doesn't work. But now we use the new recipe and yep, there you go, we have our very nice stick. Okay, so here you can see how we have indeed converted our inventory and our crafting system to work entirely with scriptable objects. There's no data stored in the code itself. The code only handles logic. Now, one big benefit of using scriptable objects as opposed to making it all through code is that adding new items and recipes is very simple. So we don't need to change absolutely anything in the code. All we need to do is create some new objects. So let's create a new item scriptable object. Let's do it for the diamond sword. So we have our data for the item. Now let's make the recipe. And again, using our really nice custom editor, we can make this really easily. So the output will be a diamond sword. And let's say we need one diamond in here, one diamond in here and a stick down here. All right, that's a recipe. We just added to our testing so that the recipe is seen by the crafting system. And now if we run, Okay, here we are. Now, first we need the stick. So let's make that. Yep, there you go. That's a recipe. So we got a stick. Now we put the stick. We split the diamonds, put one there, one there. And there you go. We have our very nice item. So you can see how literally it was super easy just to add a completely new different type of item as well as the recipe to actually make that item. So let's try a different one. Let's say create a new item for a chicken breast and then another item for some chicken nuggets. All right, we have our items. Now let's make the recipe. All right, here's the recipe. Once again, we add the recipe to our list. You could also dynamically populate this list instead of manually. And then let's also add some chicken breast to our starting item array. Okay, should be working, let's test. And in right away, we start off with some chicken in our inventory. So now let's craft some nuggets. So we need three stacks. So put one there, one there, one there. There you go. We got some really nice chicken nuggets. So there you go. Yep, just like that. So you can see how without touching the code at all, we managed to make a new item and a new recipe. Right, awesome. All right, so I've created two new items for the helmet and armor. And there you go. Just equip the nice helmet, equip the nice armor. Yep. Now let's make a diamond sword. So there it is, the stick, two diamonds. There you go, we got the item sword and equip it. And there you go, everything looks really awesome. So again, all of this is completely 100% data driven. Now again, this is just one example of use case. Scriptable objects can be used for just about anything. You can use it to store game data, just like we did here. Or you can also use them for making some really useful custom editor tools. Most Unity tools like Shadowgraph and the Scriptable Render Pipeline actually use Scriptable objects extensively to manage their data. So take that as inspiration and make your games more designer friendly with better tools by using Scriptable objects. If you found this video helpful, consider liking and subscribing. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. Subscribe to the channel for more Unity tutorials, post any questions you have in the comments, and I'll see you next time.